I need to add some more outlets in my garage. I only have two in this whole area and one of them is already being used. And I'm going to need a lot more for upcoming projects. After clearing out some space, I decided I didn't want to cut up the sheetrock and pull the wires through the studs because that would be too messy. I chose instead to use an external conduit that feeds off the GFI plug located here. And I'm going to show you step by step on how I did it. Let's go! The first thing you want to do is locate your circuit box and kill the power. Locate the room and flip the switch. It's extremely important that you notate what numbers on the circuit breaker because that determines what type of plug you need to buy. Most garages will be on a 20 amp circuit, which is what I'm going to use. With the power killed, you're free to pull out the plug without risk of shock. Notice the wires are not connected to the side screws, but are instead plugged directly in the back. I recommend connecting the wires to the screws because they stay on much more securely. When I pull off the plug, you can see that there's some yellow encased wires that are marked as home run. Home run means it's directly connected to the circuit breaker, while the other wires are connected to a different outlet in the room. Because I have direct access to the home run line, I'm going to put my junction box here. The junction box and conduit that I'm going to use for this project is this one here made by wire mold. The way the junction box works is there's five pre-cut holes in the mounting plate. If I take off the top cover, you can see that I need to remove some of the holes so I can feed the wires through. Once the wires are through, I can mount it to the wall. To remove the holes, hit it with a screwdriver and it will come right off. With it removed, I can now push the wires through. Before I do that, I'm going to put some electric tape around all the wires so that they don't get scratched up when they're pushed through. Before I tighten it down all the way, I need to make sure everything's level. Everything looks good, so I tighten it down, then grab a larger level and mark out where I want my conduit to go. I also make a mark every 16 inches to know where the studs will be. With everything marked out, I'm now ready for the conduit track. This is what the track looks like, and I want to file down the ends if I had to cut it, because they can be very sharp. I also made a mark every 16 inches on the track, so I can mount it to the wall studs. With the track ready, I can slide it in place on the junction box. Make sure it's slid all the way in and the end crease will hold it down. A great thing about using these wire mold systems is I can easily add more plugs by throwing on another track. Next step is to make sure the track is lined up and level. Then I'll grab a handful of these construction screws and secure the track to the wall. Everything is secure and level, so I'm ready to add more conduit track. However, before I can add the top conduit, I need to clip the ends off so they're round and smooth. A sharp end can risk tearing and exposing the wire. With that done, I'm going to add a vertical conduit that runs up to the storage shelf. To allow the vertical track to run across the bottom of the hanging shelves, I'm going to use this internal corner coupling fitting, which then sits on the end of the conduit track. Tighten down the joint coupling, then set the track on the junction box. I made sure everything was level, then I tighten it down like before. Everything was set, so I'm ready to run the track across the bottom of the shelves. I was originally going to run the conduit track on the back, against the wall, but then decided to bring it forward and run it across the front of the shelf instead. I later plan on building a workbench and installing lights, so I'll have to lean across a desk if I put it against the wall. These wire mold tracks are great because I can run a line anywhere I want. To make the 90 degree turn across the front, I'll need to install this elbow. I'll place it in front of the track and then secure it to the bottom of the shelves using screws. I placed another track on the 90 degree bend and secured that as well. Everything looks good, so I'm ready to place some outlets. To hold down the outlets, I'm going to use these wire mold outlet cases. I can place them anywhere on the track and add as many outlets as I need. I just drop it into place, then tighten the screw down. This first bracket is going to be for the GFCI outlet, and I laid out several other spots where I want to put regular outlets. Now a quick note, it's very important you get the right amperage outlet for the circuit. As we looked earlier, I'm running on a 20 amp circuit, which most garages will be on. When you purchase an outlet, look on the front of the box and you can see what amperage it is. I also went with these tamper resistance to help prevent dust from getting in. Also when you're installing outlets, put the wires around the screws, not the back plugs. 
I pre-placed wires on the GFCI outlet that will go to the home run, then I twisted them together so I could tell which ones they were. There's going to be a lot of wires coming through so it's easy to get things mixed up. Again the yellow encased wires are the home run which means they connect directly to the circuit breaker. This is what I'll connect to the GFI plug. When it's all done it looks like a big mess but I'll try to go over the basics. I'm not a licensed electrician so I recommend hiring one to do this part. The home run line connects to the GFCI plug through this wire here. This hot line connects through the bottom half of the GFCI plug. The other black wire is the load and it connects to the other outlets here. The downstream load from the GFCI plug is protected. The white neutral wire also runs to the GFCI plug first and connects together to the other outlets. The green are ground and are connected and capped off. It's a lot to take in so I'll run through it one more time. The home run carries the line to the GFCI plug and the protected load is carried to the other outlets. The home run neutral also comes through the GFI to the other outlets and the green ground is capped off. Again, you'll need a licensed electrician to inspect your work or to do it for you. Now that it's connected, you can see I left a little slack just in case I want to add another outlet down the road. And with everything wired, I'm ready to install the covers and the outlet plates. I measured the gaps between the plugs, then cut the covers to the correct size. When installing, make sure the retaining screw area is in front of the plate, not behind it. Make sure the wires are clear from the protective cover when you clip it on and screw it down. With the plugs tightened down, I'm ready to put on the junction box. Again, the retaining screw part of the plug goes on the top of the cover. I ended up adding a few more plugs on the top to give me more flexibility. Almost done, so the final step is to add these front covers. They're installed just like any other outlet cover, but the metal makes them much more durable. I added this USB outlet on the very end for extra versatility. Everything looks great, so I think we're done with this project. My favorite part about using this track is that I can easily add additional outlets down the road if I need any. It will also be simple to extend it if I later want to add more outlets to this adjacent wall. If you want to learn how I easily added these InSight LED lights, check out that video link below. I think this project turned out great, so thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.